welcome football fans all over Canada and all over the world. Uh, we are broadcasting here straight from the Seven Chief Sportsplex in Atsunida Nation Land, the uh, Treaty 7 territory in Calgary, Alberta, the beautiful, beautiful Calgary, Alberta, with beautiful views from the mountains. Uh, we welcome you here tonight, this afternoon, for the for the women's final of the second women's finals of the uh, Canada Canada Soccer Futsal Championship. Uh, this is Saskatoon Green and White and the Winning Pack Legacy for the first time ever uh, in all the divisions, men's and women's. There is a final that don't have Ontario and Quebec, so these ladies are making history already on the second year of their presentation. It's incredible to be able to privilege to be here with you. My name is JR Figueiredo. I'm going to be your host this afternoon of an afternoon with a lot of futsal, a lot of fun for your entertainment here in the beautiful Calgary, Alberta. So the Saskatoon Green Golds starting line um, uh, is with number one, Kathleen Roberts, number three, Tia Leacox, number six, Georgina Gatinos Clark, number seven, Cheyenne Lehman, number eight, Harley Noel, number 11, Alyssa Dagon, number 14, Dorida uh, Sutherland, number 15, Isabella Salazar Collins, number 18, Nami Nguyen, number 22, Jade Humphan, number 23, Kieran McCurcher, number 25, Haley Weber, number 32, Mary Kuchet. Winnipeg Legacy FC with uh, number one, Lydia Bazline, number five, Ali Moore, number seven, and her uh, captain, Selena Esperanza, number nine, Chelsea Lindsay, number 14, Ali, number three, Kezia, number four, Abigail, number six, Allison, number eight, Liana, number 11, Jasmine, number 12, Michelle, number 13, Brooklyn, number 15, Katie, and number 16, uh, Marika. The game's about to starting here, and as we're getting ready here for the position, uh, Saskatoon has the ball, and there we go. There you have it, your 2025 24 uh, Canada Soccer Futsal Championship started for the final. First ever without Quebec and Montreal. There's, go. There's a tension of Saskatoon number 14 already trying a shot in there right beside it. Dryad with a nice shot in there trying it. So Winnipeg Legacy is trying to build it from the back with number five, Ali Moore, just kind of controlling with number nine there. Um, Chelsea Lindsay, a great player, she has a great tournament so far. Uh, it's been impressive to see how these teams came to be and, and how these teams kind of came to the got to the final. Like Chelsea's been incredible for, um, for, for Winnipeg. And, 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 and be really a difference making in the whole in the whole tournament, right? When he picks really from the back, controlling that, trying to create space, um, and then Saskatoon be able to defend very proper, very well, and the way to go. Winnipeg is moving the ball side to side, trying to create space, trying to make uh, Saskatoon moving around. Chelsea control the ball, finding a hole there. Creating an opportunity and it goes to the goes to the outline there with with the goalie Kelly Roberts just kind of watching to see what happens. It's very interesting to see these these girls developing throughout the, the season throughout the tournament. It's a very short tournament, it's only four days, right? And then they're able to come together and one mistake kind of cost it. Uh, it can cost you a lot. So this 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 game is starting a little precise it uh, and, and and it just allows us then to to kind of work through it and make sure that. Uh, they're, they're working through the process of, of kind of setting down the nerves. The first five minutes being always, always a challenge. There we saw a shot from, um, saw a shot from the right uh, from Saskatoon. There, it's a lot of pressure trying to build from the back. Winnipeg got a hole. It's a three versus two there and goes out. This is the first ever Prairie Finals in any Canadian Futsal Championship, and it's uh, only. It only happened before uh, where a non-Quebec and Ontario team went to the finals. And that was actually way back on the Canadian Championships in 2017 uh, when the Saskatoon Olympic, Saskatoon team made to the finals on the men's in 2017. So it's been five years that all the male and female finals has always been Quebec and Ontario. So this is, this is a very impressive uh, that to see two Prairie teams, university teams, kind of coming together and, and getting in there. Yeah. 
the referees for this match is uh, a whole Alberta line. First referee is Sean Lambert from Edmonton. Second referee is Michelle Holmes from Calgary. Third, uh, third referee is Michael, Hum, uh, Michael Munn from Calgary. And the timekeeper is Gareth Kennett from uh, Edmonton. Unipel is, Unipel is trying to get out of the ball there from the back. It's been, it's been a bit of a challenge. It's actually to put a high pressure there, kind of forcing a mistake, and they're not able to come out of the back. Haley has the ball. She's kind of caught to prove to the corner. She passed to Nami. Nami's looking for an option. She got back to the goalie, Kaylin. Kaylin's kind of open up to Tia. Tia's kind of trying to see the space. Kaylee's kind of moving around to the other side. She found a little bit of hole in there. She's kind of trying to move. They're trying to circle in the ball to get, to get Winnipeg into that trap. Winnipeg was able to, to counterattack with James, Jasmine. Jasmine kind of controlled it, passed it between the legs, and there you go. There's an option now for Winnipeg. What's going to happen? Uh, there you go. Saskatoon able to defend. Like, Winnipeg's playing into counterattack and then trying to kind of, to kind of, try to, to, to nail Saskatoon on the, Saskatoon on the, on, on the counterattack there, but you know, it's a very strong defensive team. Uh, you see there, uh, Mary kind of controlled the ball and there is a first foul of the game and that goes against Winnipeg. Just so that we all understand in, in futsal, you can only do five falls in the first, in, in per half. And uh, after the fifth fall, you, you have a direct free kick from the 10 meters. So that's why the controlling of the falls are very important. The managing of the falls are very important in futsal. Katie, number 14 from Winnipeg, had a shot in there, and she's kind of controlled the ball back, and she tried to have another option. It was, it was very interesting to see uh, her development in there. Tia has the ball, passes to Nami. Who gets the ball to Haley? Haley has control it. What she's going to do, she's bring to the middle. Pass to Nami. Nami going back to Tia. She's trying to open up. She's trying to find a hole there for Mary. She's... Connected with, with two Winnipeg players, they're trying to counterattack and then they destroy it. There's a counterattack there for Mary. She's kind of she's dribbling to the right side. And she shoots it and she gets a corner kick. Very interesting counter attack, counter -attack from Saskatchewan there, as they kind of kind of kill the, the attacking from Winnipeg and try to quickly kind of solve the problem. Um, they try to shoot from far now with uh, with Tia Leacox. Coach Juan from Saskatoon, Colombian native, lover of futsal. Um, he's, he's super passionate about futsal. We, you know, he was talking a little bit about tactics and, and, and what how he likes to play the game. Uh, Coach Juan is being, is being incredible, and interesting to, to see the, the passion for futsal and the development of the futsal in the Paris, being really, really impressive. Jade has the counter attack in there. She's bringing it to the middle. She found Haley, Haley Weber. It's controlling, bringing to the middle, trying to create an option there. She's dragged the ball to the right side and she got a throw, throw in. Winnipeg trying to exit from the back in there. Trying to move back and forth to find a connection. Up. Oh, what a beautiful pass in there to Cheyenne. And, and she was not able to, to complete the pass in there. Saskatoon is coming to the right side. Just trying to counter attack. Finding the corner there. It's still the ball. She won. It's a corner kick. She got a corner kick. And this is, this is beautiful. This is perfect for Saskatoon. They're trying to set a play here with... Um, Number 11, Lisa Dagon on the other side. They move it. 
She's moving, she's creating space, she's shooting it, and that's out. That's out. Jessica Doom with a lot of lot of shots right now. Uh, with five shots on, on ten of shots on net right now, and but they are only two shots on on net. So it's being uh, they need to be a little bit more precise uh, on their shots. Jade Trench across the ball, then she got a corner kick. They're trying to set up the same play. They're moving towards the middle. Winnipeg is able to defend proper, and they get a throw in, a kick in for Winnipeg. Coach Carrier from Winnipeg. She's been coaching the university, the university leagues in, 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 in Winnipeg in there. She's been working with the Canadian Memorial University. She's the coach of the Canadian, also the Canadian University Memorial uh, Mennonite University in Winnipeg, and, and she coached the Legas FC team. It's a very, very well-structured team. Very, they, they have very clear proposal of, of starting in a more defensive mold, Kind of allowing Saskatchewan to come in their way and kind of count to hold it. Did the contract kind number for Chin? That's a goal. Goal. Dradia Sutherland for Saskatchewan. In an interesting counter attack coming from the middle, stealing the ball from Winnipeg there. She's able to be open to the net in there and she scores a Beautiful, beautiful goal there to put Saskatchewan ahead. 1-0 on the score, on the final gold medal game. Saskatchewan's 1-0 with 14 minutes to play on the first half. It's, it's, it's impressive. It's impressive like how they build that up. They steal the ball in the middle. They counterattack. This 2v1, and she was wide open there in front of the goalie to be able to score. Saskatchewan 1, Winnipeg 0. Scotch is trying to rebuild here. The goal score. Dryer kind of having the ball. Mary pass it back to her. She's organizing. She's trying to ask for space. Mary's open up in the right side. She's looking for an option. She finds Alyssa. Alyssa put it back to Mary and she stole it from the Winnipeg. Is that going to go for the counter attack? And they're trying to connect it. And Kaylin has the ball, controlling it and keeping. Tranquility to Saskatchewan back there. Alice is trying to open up. She gets the ball to Nemi, who's kind of moving around, kind of creating his spaces. She's trying to connect to Mary. Jas Jasmine kind of steal the ball and she tried to shoot it, bring to the right side, but she's blocked it. She's blocked it by Nemi and she gets a corner kick there for, for Winnipeg. We got a shot in there from Ali from far. It's with no, uh, no issue there. Scotch meeting from the back again. Haley has the ball. Kiara has the ball. Get to Mary. Mary's bringing it to the middle. It's a very classic shot. There's a shot. And good job there from goalie Lija Basline. Basile. Great, great positioning there, great center position there from her and blocking the ball. She's catching it, a corner kick. Third in the game for Saskatchewan. They're gonna try to play the same set. They have a play in the middle. Two outside, they're gonna shoot from far and that's uh, another shot off the net for Saskatchewan. Winnipeg is having a hard time with the high pressure of, of Saskatchewan there right now. And Otobi is having an issue with that and they're kind of struggling. They're losing the ball in the middle. That's what got them in trouble in the, for the first goal. So they need to figure out a way to, to build that, the high pressure there. So they're trying to move the ball side to side. Chelsea turns the ball. 
It's a shot. Shot off the net. Manitoba hasn't sh shoot the ball in net yet. Look at that, it's Mary alone by herself. She crossed the ball. It's defended. It's trying to build it again. Connected to Chelsea. But she misses Mary. Mary just left the ball. Lose the ball there. That's ball for, for Manitoba. It's 10 minutes to place you in this half. Manitoba is behind it. They're trying to break the high pressure from Saskatchewan. Scotch is able to always steal that ball in the middle there. Not a lot of space, not a lot of time. They try to block in a square in there. They got to Mary. Saskatchewan moved the ball side to side really perfectly. They really created a cycle. Very interesting. The base of players for the Manitoba teams comes from the universities in around the Winnipeg area. On the men's and the female side, it's really interesting. Uh, it's really interesting to see the progression of futsal in Western Canada ever since the national championship came to Calgary last year. Uh, we see the league in Edmonton coming up with the league, you know, there's working on leagues in, in Winnipeg, the Saskatoon League, the Vancouver League. There's, it's all these leagues kind of popping up all because the national championship came to Canada, Calgary last year. Um, and people are excited about the game. It's transforming and changing the game, and it's really, really impressive to see, to see the growth of the game there. So Winnipeg is trying to come out, and that's just a gentle ball for, for Kelly Roberts to kind of start and build it again. She connected to Jade. Jade is passing up to Alisa, who's trying to find a hole. She found a connection there with Cheyenne. It's going to bring it up to Alisa back, and that's a, goal. That's a good, good build. And, with speed and movement from Saskatchewan. Exactly how we're supposed to play futsal. It's really, really impressive. Manitoba's kind of coming up, moving the ball side to side, using to the right side. And, and they just kind of, the last touch in there, the last setup touch in there, a little bit more precision, a little bit more, a little bit more love and that last touch and that you make sure it connects it with the player that needs to be connected. Like I was saying, yeah, the the the, the Manitoba the Manitoba program starts it's very heavy on university players, very heavy on universities there and it's been impressive to see the growth. They already got the men's on the on the bronze finals and the women's on the gold on the gold process. It's really impressive and so they are kind of building up on the right side. They finally connected with number seven on the right side the goalie come out and just defense use Selena had the opportunity. She got blocked by, by the goal. It's been really a hard hard for Winnipeg legacy to, to come out of the, the high pressure of the Saskatoon green and white. Uh, it's, it's been really a hard thing for them to do. They're trying to do those long balls, but they're not connecting. Saskatoon is protecting the center of the field very, very wise. It's just creating these incredible challenges for, for Winnipeg Legacy. And we have a timeout. A timeout right now from the bench from Saskatoon. Here's the timeout. It's a great opportunity for us to thank the Canada soccer sponsors for all the, the support they are giving to, to soccer in Canada, uh, Toyota, CA, CIBC, Visa, Gatorade, Google Squeeze, and Satnel Storage. Also, like to thank you, the CUSA Local Organizing Committee sponsors in Calgary, Sahota Realty, the Calgary Women's Soccer Association, Edward Jones, Fever Sports, and KFC. Don't forget to check out Team Canada the Futsal. The, the men's Team Canada Futsal right now, they're on the CONCACAF qualifies for the World Cup. Um, last night they, they played Cuba, they tied 5-5. It was a very interesting game. And tonight they're going to play Panama. So you can find it at 8 p.m. Eastern Time and 5 p.m. Pacific Time. Just go to youtube.com slash CONCACAF and they're going to be broadcasting the Team Canada game. The game starts here. 
with Winnipeg with the ball again. They have the issue in the middle there. Just catch and take the ball again. They're kind of moving around. They're kind of trying to put the pressure. Daria has the ball. She moves it. She finds it. She was looking for Alyssa on the right side. She almost could have. It was a little bit good idea there. Like the Saskatchewan right now is dominating the center of the field. Like Winnipeg Agassi has no, uh, they have no ability to move the ball through the middle to the center. And it's creating a little bit of a headache. That's how they, Saskatoon got the first goal in there. Since Winnipeg needs to adjust that, the movement and then how they're moving the ball and that's getting them in trouble. Tia has the ball. She's moving back and forth in there. It's number two, Jade, Jade has the ball. She's beating one player. She connects it with Cheyenne, who tries the middle. The ball is told by, by Ali, who's trying to control, and the ball is back to, to Saskatoon possession. Like Saskatoon is dominating possession right now. Alisa has the ball. She found it. She tried to shoot it. One more shot on net for Saskatoon. Another shot for Saskatoon. Winnipeg is really leaving the middle open up there right now. It's 11 shots against three right now for, for Saskatoon. Winnipeg having trouble to get the ball to the middle. Saskatoon are very good at high pressure, like they are very good at high pressure right now, forcing the mistake from Winnipeg, forcing them to play to the middle and, and, and able to steal the ball. Good build up from Winnipeg right now and they lose the ball. Lose the ball one more time. Mary has the ball, they got the ball, Winnipeg got the ball back. They try to build it again with Ali. Selena pass it back to Michelle who gets a kick in. Michelle's gonna try to find a pace. There's there's no there's no space on the left side, there's no crossing there. So they turn the ball around and they miss the ball. It's a build up from the back there. Tia has the space, she has all the space in the world and she loses control of the ball in there and give the ball back to Winnipeg. Winnipeg makes substitution there. Chelsea coming back on the field. She's looking for space on the left. She's gonna get the ball in there. They're trying to work on it, they're trying to the right side and that's a kick in, kick in for Saskatoon. It's, it's it's being a challenging game here for Winnipeg right now. They're kind of they need to kind of readjust as, as the game ends. It's less than around five minutes to play on the half. They need to kind of work on the, the ball through the center. They, they they're not like Saskatchewan has a majority of the possession right now. Most of the shots right now is 11 versus three shots on that from Saskatchewan and, and Winnipeg has to be able to create more shots on that, create more opportunities for them to shoot on that. Ball's two in. Lita has the ball. She connected. She connected with Martin. Had a shot. Selena had a good shot in there. Good opportunity for Winnipeg. Just 
Ooh, there's a great counter-attack there for Winnipeg. And Chelsea has the opportunity there. We're receiving here right now the camera. There's an opportunity there on the right side for Saskatchewan in the shot outside of the net. We are receiving here on our cabin here in the, on the broadcast, Coach Anderson from the men's side of the, of the Manitoba team. Coach Anderson is being developing the work in futsal in Manitoba. And, and you know, we are watching the games here with the girls and the girls are having a little bit of a hard time with the pressure there. Coach, Coach, if you're coaching this team, you're not, but if you're coaching this team, how would you kind of make adjustments you make it to, to allow the Winnipeg to come out of the middle there? Saskatchewan, it's really creating problems through the middle there for uh, from, from Winnipeg. Like, well, well, how would you manage this? Uh, first of all, thanks, JR, for, for having me here with you guys. It's a pleasure. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a tough game. Saskatchewan is a very good team. Um, I think depending on the lines that we have in, the girls are very capable of uh, having their first time touch and using the pivot a little bit more. Uh, it would be a way for them to have that space and stretching the field a little more with that pivot so the wingers can come into the mid and do the one-two combinations and be able to get out of there. And that's been the challenge for, for Winnipeg today, like where, you know, the, the, the less pass there from the side to the pivot to be able to control the ball is be struggling. Saskatchewan is dominating the, the, the center of the field right now and they have a lot of freedom to move the ball from side from side to side. So, Coach Anderson, what can you tell me about futsal in, in Manitoba? How's, how's futsal growing in Manitoba there? We, we're still developing the game there for sure, and we are very excited with the next uh, a few steps to, uh, coming our way. Um, our provincial leagues, we have men's and women's leagues now, which is awesome. Uh, unfortunately, there's only four teams competing at this time. Um, and then when you come to the national level, it's a different level of competition for us for sure. But I feel that this year we are showing that uh, in both sides, men and women, that we are prepared and getting better and better and ready to compete with the very strong teams on the nation. So we're it, it's, excited. It's really impressive what you guys are doing out in Manitoba there. Like we, this is a historical final. This is the first ever final. I was telling like as the first ever final with, with non-Ontario and Quebec. And all, not just on the, on the female side, but also on the men side. Only in 2017, Saskatchewan men's was able to get to the finals. This is the first time ever that you have a, a final of the futsal championship without a Quebec and Ontario team. And it's really impressive what you guys are doing in Manitoba there and like how you guys are developing the game and you guys are growing the game. Uh, Coach, what are your expectations for your, your bronze medal game there against Alberta? Uh, first of all, thank you. Yeah, we're trying to work on that and uh, improve our game for sure. Uh, this should be a very good game. We're excited to play uh, against the home team, so it should be fun. They're going to have a bunch of supporters out there, I'm sure. Uh, it's going to be an exciting game. The guys are all uh, ready to go. And uh, yeah, I'm, I think we have a good chance with them. They are a good team. Uh, the game is going to be a very leveled game, both sides with chances of winning. Uh, it's always good to play those games. That's the games that we work for and I uh, look forward to. So we're all excited. Coach, we, we're excited about what you guys are doing. What you guys are doing in Manitoba. Good luck. Good luck on your, on your bronze medal game in there. Uh, hopefully, you guys are going to be able to, you know, as a, as a homegrown, I hope you don't take the silverware, but you guys take the experience. But hopefully, you guys are going to be able to, to take the experience and keep growing the game. Futsal is a very dynamic game and, and, uh, and then everything that goes uh, with it. Thank you very much, Coach. Appreciate it for your time here on the broadcast and the transmission here. And that was Coach Anderson from, from the Manitoba team for the Mayon side. He's able to kind of share with us a little bit about his, you know, the vision of the game and how it's growing there in Manitoba and all the experience. As I hear where the game's going, we have Saskatchewan still dominating the center of the field in there. There's not much going on, and, and Winnipeg has not had a lot of answers for it. And then Cheyenne kind of build up for the middle, and then, you know, Ligia was able to kind of protect the ball. But... Winnipeg needs to do something about the, the middle of the game in there. They, they are losing a little bit of the center. Uh, they're not able to connect to the pivot, and that's kind of creating the, the whole, whole struggles for that in there. Jasmine kind of connected with Ali, who, again, is, they are not being able to connect with, with Selena or anybody to play in that pivot position there.
it's a very dynamic game today here, especially Saskatchewan. Saskatoon is kind of bringing the, the moving the ball from side to side. They're able to kind of create some kind of interesting opportunities in front of the in front of Lydia there. Um, again, the final touch is being a little bit, you know, they need to work on it, but but they are creating the opportunities. They had like ready um, 13 shots on that, and, and Winnipeg only had four. The rider kind of had the ball control. She connects with Cheyenne. She's kind of trying to beat it. She turns around. Brooklyn is kind of trying to get the rebound there, and she's kind of trying to find a spot. But again, she has nobody to connect it. She has nobody to connect the ball. Winnipeg is not presenting themselves. It's not creating the passing lanes uh, to be able to do the counterattack. Jade kind of beat it. She has a shot. A little bit too wide, a little bit to the right. Last touch, the last touch Saskatchewan needs to kind of work on it for them, for them to, be, to add more to the score. You see Coach Juan here kind of agitating, asking, asking Saskatchewan to push a little bit higher, to push a little bit higher the pressure there, making Winnipeg more uncomfortable. Ali has the ball. She connects with Ali. Brooklyn has the ball. She's going to hold it. Get back to Ali. And then lose the ball. They are not able to connect with the, with the, with the, stronger, with the stronger pair there. Mary turns the ball to the other side. Goes from the left to the right. Jade, control it. She has options. What she's going to do? She connected with Haley. Lydia. Very well positioned there. That's the 10th shot on that. For Saskatoon. Winnipeg is not moving ball side to side. Winnipeg is not able to find the holes, find the connectors on the side. And there's the Saskatoon timeout for you right now. One more time is a great opportunity to, to kind of to remind you about the Canada Soccer Sponsors. Um, thank you so much for all the support you give to soccer in Canada and all that you do here for the sport. Toyota, CIBC, Visa, Gatorade, Google Squeeze, Sentinel Storage, and the Government of Canada. Also, shout out to the QSA Local Organizing Committee sponsors, Sahota Realty, Calgary Women's Soccer Association, Edward Jones, Fever Sports, and KFC. Like I said before, don't forget to check out the Team Canada Futsal and the CONCACAF Futsal Championship. Last night they played Cuba, they tied 5 5 in the Vineo Bader game. Tonight they, pay, they play the leader of the group. Look at that, it has a shot. Abigail had an opportunity and she got a corner kick. Brooklyn kind of controlled the ball, turns around. Kaylin has the ball. See, that's what Winnipeg didn't do more. They're moving around, creating the opportunity, create those shots, test, test, test Kaylin. They're not moving the ball around enough. Look at the counter attack here from Saskatoon. They control, they control it, controlling the pace now, moving the ball to one side to the other. Ellie has the ball. No foul in there. Connect to Saskatoon. That's danger. That's danger. Georgina has the ball. She's going to create it. And she missed the shot. Like I was saying, don't forget to check Team Canada tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific at youtube.com slash CONCACAF. Team Canada facing Panama, the leader of the group. They need to win. They need the three points to go to the next stage. Mary has the ball. She tried to connect it with Kieran, but she, she missed that. She got a corner kick in there. Kieran has the ball. Connect to Nami. Nami's looking for Mary. 
Mary again, Tsunami, that was a bad pass. Counter-attack, kick in for Winnipeg. Winnipeg's looking for the option there, the opportunity there. They slow down a little bit, kind of looking for it. It's the last, last minute of the game. Trying to kind of control themselves and hold it themselves so that we can kind of move it around. Go from one side to the other. And maybe during the break, they can go to the dressing room and kind of organize, organize the team, kind of move a little bit, change a little bit. Scatchel with these high pressures, really getting Winnipeg into trouble, but they find a little bit of a hole. Mary controlled the ball, and that's fouled for against Winnipeg. Third fault. It's almost the last second, last 20 seconds of the game. It's almost in the first half in there. So it's going to for a couple of fouls, a couple of options in there. The fatigue is kind of starting to set in the end. Kind of trying to set up a corner kick. Mary's in front of from Lydia, kind of moving, creating space. Nami has the ball. And it's an own goal! Goal! Saskatoon green and white. Now Saskatoon two, Winnipeg Legacy zero. What an unfortunate event in there, and an own goal from Winnipeg Legacy right at the last second of the half. Last second of the half, Saskatoon uh, scored the second goal in a free kick in a very, very unfortunate event there for Winnipeg. And, and now they're going to come to the half with a depth of 2-0. On the sec on the second leg, it's oh my gosh, it's 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 really upsetting when that kind of thing happens. Part of the game, mistakes. You're trying to protect your goalie. You're trying to kind of overdo something, and and, and you touch the ball and you get in your own net. This is really 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 upsetting. There, Ali was trying to protect and defend it, and goes to the net. It's just one of those things that it's really unfortunate. So now we go into the break with Saskatoon, Green White with two goals, Winnipeg Legacy with zero. As we go into the break now for 15 minutes here, we go in the intermission on the on the game. A little update on the bronze medal game right now. Uh, Quebec is one, Ontario zero. On the second half already, on the second leg of the second half, 17 minutes to play on the second half. Quebec is leading 1-0 against Ontario. We mentioned before, it's a historical game, it's historical. You can check on the other, on the other stream as well from Canada Soccer, uh, Ontario and Quebec. They are playing there from the from the bronze medal. Just kind of go jumping around there for the from the bronze medal game. Right now, Quebec one, Ontario zero.
it's been it's been incredible to to see the development of of futsal coming over in 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 the prairies in western canada it's one of those things where you got to you got to you got to see this like i said this is a historical it's a historical it's a historical final uh, for the first time ever we don't have ontario come back on the canadian futsal championship on the male and the female side it's one of those things where uh, it's, it's it's a very historical moment. We have Saskatchewan and, and Manitoba playing playing this final game here, um, and, and we know we heard the coach from the from the men's side of Manitoba, and we have now here the the Saskatchewan representative um, for, for 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 the province of Saskatchewan coming over and talking about a little bit of the, the food sound of Saskatchewan. You guys are leading to zero. How how's it feeling? It's uh, nerve wracking. Both teams are playing really well, and uh, our girls have found the back of the net a couple of times, so things are looking good. It's really impressive how uh, you know, Coach Juan set up the team to play in high pressure. They're dominating the center there. They're not giving Winnipeg a lot of options through the middle. Uh, and, and to see the girls executing this, it's really, really impressive how, how much they, they're playing high pressure. But that's also you know, very physical, very demanding. Fourth day of the tournament. This is game number, number, number three for them. Can the girls keep up on the second half? Oh yes, our girls are uh, really well trained, really well coached. They're a university team, and uh, their coaches are futsal's are life. Jerson's from Mexico, uh, Jaime's from Colombia, and so they've grown up with the game. So uh, for to, for them to actually go to plan or to make adjustments, they're very well coached in this, and so they and they're passing it on, uh, passing on the game plan and the skills to the kids. And these girls train very hard, so uh, they. So the, one of the things that I said it was it was his historical final, the first yes. non Ontario Quebec yeah. Quebec final. And uh, first of all, how does it feel being on the historical final from Saskatchewan? And two is like, how is the developmental futsal in, in in the province? And I know it's been ever since the the championship came to Calgary last year, we're seeing all these leagues kind of popping up in the prairies. It's getting popularity. How is how's the development out of Saskatchewan there? Saskatchewan's de developing really well. Uh, the Prairie Province, Yorkton always had a uh, ha always had a bit of a base of futsal, and now that's growing. They're growing with uh, Swift Current, Moose Jaw. We have teams in Regina and Saskatoon. So, and we had we've had uh, for the last couple of years provincial football championships, and the Great Plains League, which is developed by these people, their own league out of the. Uh, uh, they're playing in the gyms and everything. Uh, there, it's the the parents are really excited about it, the players and everything. So it's really really exciting. So the game's on a, on an upward swing in Saskatchewan. It, it's it's really interesting because like you know here in the prairies, uh, uh, futsal is, is the natural game, right? Futsal yeah. should be the natural game where we, we can play half of the year because of the snow. Uh, we can go. We have we have the infrastructure already set up for gyms and everything. And it's really it's really cool to see Saskatchewan Saskatchewan Soccer Association invest in everything. I don't know if you know this, but Olympia. The, on the men's side, it was the only non-Ontario and Quebec team to ever play a final. And they did that in 2017. Oh, no, I didn't know that. Didn't <laughs> exactly. Know that. Yeah. So in 2017, on the foot, on the futsal yeah. championship, was the first time that a non-Ontario and Quebec was a Saskatchewan team that, uh, that yeah. made it there. Um, yeah. What's uh, what's happening in Saskatchewan? What's the, the growth of the game in there? Not just futsal, but 11. What's what's happening in Saskatchewan there? And, and then what's, 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 what's for the outdoor season there? Uh, the game, the game is uh, mainly uh, with the strat plan of Saskatchewan is to grow the game. We're approaching more smaller communities, schools, that type, trying to get them all invited. In. The the key you need in uh, in the smaller communities is if you have somebody that's passionate about the game, we can work with them in that game. So that's our goal is to grow everything at the grassroots because if you grow it at the grassroots, it'll just grow, and that's our big thing. We we're watching what you're doing there in Saskatchewan. This is being impressive to see the growth of the game, growth of futsal. Congratulations to you guys in there. Congratulations on being the final on the, on the female side. Yes. And uh, we, we're definitely looking forward to see you guys here next year again. You betcha. We'll be back. And this is a really exciting. So this is a, we thank you. And uh, this has been a fantastic tournament for everybody. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Excellent. It's been, this is the Saskatchewan representative here coming to the futsal championship in Canada, in, in Calgary, Alberta. Uh, here from the seven chief sports plaques in you know, to Sneda Nation land, three sevens territory. It's really impressive to see the level of the game and how the game is being developed. Great attendance here in the, throughout the whole weekend. 
you know, hundreds of people coming through these, these sports plaques and to be able to see some people seeing futsal for the first time, the fast pace, the, the control, the technique, and how things goes. Just an update for you if you're still here on the broadcast with us um, on the Quebec and Ontario game. Right now, Quebec is two, Ontario is zero. So Quebec's right now taking bronze on the 2024 futsal championship for Canada soccer. So we're going to keep you updated as the game here progress and uh, we'll see you some few minutes away from the beginning of the second half uh, just an update for you here Saskatchewan has two goals uh, Winnipeg has zero Saskatchewan goal was scored by Darius Sutherland and the second goal was the own goal um, from from Winnipeg Saskatchewan had 14 shots on net when Winnipeg they only had four um, and then Saskatchewan three corners against one from Winnipeg. It's been a very dynamic game, very lot of options as the players are returning here to the court as they're getting ready for the second half. You can see that um, there is people are excited about it. the beginning of the second half. All these, all the fans are attending the game and creating, creating an incredible atmosphere here. Also, just remind you that. The Team Canada for Futsal is playing tonight at 5 p.m. and Pacific time and 8 p.m. Eastern time at youtube.com slash CONCACAF. They're going to face Panama for the CONCACAF Futsal Championships that qualifies for the World Cup in Azerbaijan in November. Uh, games can, we can watch the games at youtube.com slash CONCACAF. Uh, just going to help support the boys. They, they tie with Cuba last night. 1-1. Panama won the game. They need it to move it, um, they need to win tonight to be able to move to the next, uh, to the next stage. Saskatoon has scored 12 goals already on the tournament. They only allowed six goals in. Um, Winnipeg Legacy score 11 goals, and they allow now four goals. They, they came with the best defense. They still the best defense of the tournament, but um, but they need to kind of change a little bit how they're gonna see themselves on the court in there and how they're gonna be able to counter-attack and, and, and control again the middle of the game. Uh, that's going to be the challenge for, for Winnipeg as we, we go to the second half. And this is the, both teams are coming up. Uh, the referees also are coming up to the court. We're going to be starting in the next few minutes. Again, another local, local shout-out to uh, the Canada Soccer sponsors for providing the support to soccer in Canada. Toyota, CIBC, Visa, Gatorade, Gogo Squeeze, and Sentinel Storage. Also, uh, the local, the QSA local organizing committee, um, Sahota Brioti, Calgary's Women's Soccer Association, Edward Jones, Fever Sports, and KFC. It's been an incredible weekend here in Calgary, Alberta. Uh, since Thursday, games happening back to back to back from 10 a.m. all the way to 8 p.m. here at the Seven Chiefs Sports Labs com uh, Sports Plex Complex in Sunita Nation land, Treaty City 7 territory. It's really, really well organized by QS of the Calgary Night Soccer Association. Uh, we really thank our hosts. It's been incredible. It's being organized, it's being so such a fun environment, such a fun tournament to be part of it. Uh, all the hard work, we really want to make sure that we shout out to our volunteers, all the volunteers that also came and help out, make sure things were in place. Uh, it's been an incredible, incredible, incredible tournament here for all, all, the, all, the, all the players and, and all, the, all the teams that have been involved in this tournament this weekend. So thank you very much, QSA, for organizing it. Thank you, Canada Soccer, as well, for putting it together. It's been an incredible opportunity to be able to see the best futsal in the country right now. And, and that's going to be one of those things where we, we're very proud of it. One great, great, great futsal happening in the country.
We are gearing up here for the second half. The players are taking back this, the field. Sask Saskatoon 2, Winnipeg 0. We're going to start the second half in here. The Just doing the last final check for the beginning of the second half. We see a little bit of a different formation from Saskatoon here. A little bit more, like, like I said, a little bit more concentrated in the middle. We see three players kind of concentrated in the middle. They're giving the sides to Winnipeg. Um, and, and Winnipeg is not dominating in the middle. They're not having opportunity to get in the middle. We see a more wider formation here for Winnipeg. Uh, Brooklyn has the ball there in the middle. She's going to start. And she connects it with Selena. She's trying to create a space in there. It's being protected. Ball is out. Balls for Saskatoon. Um, we're expecting a different different position here, different attitude from, from Winnipeg that if they wanna come back, come back on this on this half. Saskatoon a very tight middle formation here. Dryer has the ball. Connected with Alyssa, she get ball, the ball back. She finally this wide open, wide open Cheyenne on the, on the left side. She's moving to the center. Winnipeg kind of getting confused a little bit, trying to mark men to men, not not zones in there. And and Cheyenne got a kick in for her. Jade has the ball. She's trying to find holes in there on the Winnipeg defense. She found it. She found it. She connected. She's able to connect it. She connects to left side, and it's kind of open. She's still on the ball. There's an opportunity there for Shade, and she shoots it. She's blocked it. And it's a kick in for, for Saskatoon. It's really impressive how the Saskatoon team is able to, to find these little holes on the Winnipeg defense. We, don't, we haven't seen Winnipeg changing much of that structure right now. They're really much playing the same way they play in the first half with a little bit of intensity, too much space, giving too much space to Saskatoon, giving too much, much open to Saskatoon in there. They did not, did not be able to move the ball, but they find a hole a little bit over there. Ellie has the ball. She got to Brooklyn, who's looking for an option in the middle. She turns. Kaylin able to get a rebound out of Dryer. The rider. The rider get the ball to the left side in there with Alyssa. It's a Winnipeg ball. Brooklyn control. She kind of do the turn. She's her size, and that's the center. Oh, that's a rebound, and it's goal. Goal! For Winnipeg Legacy. Ali. Ali's got a rebound out of the shot. Brooklyn kind of shoot in the middle. Could only get a rebound, and Ali was right there to rebound. Now it's... Saskatoon 2, Winnipeg Legacy 1. And now we have a game, ladies and gentlemen. We have a game right now. Incredible, incredible coming back from Winnipeg Legacy. They're really creating the opportunities now. They're kind of connected. So let's see if we have, they're able to keep the pressure high and keeping, keeping pushing Saskatoon back. 2-1 for Saskatoon. This is a very good gold medal game, ladies and gentlemen. Mary has the ball on the right side. She could keep the balls in game. She shoot it and get us a corner kick for her. Tia has the ball. Connect to Nami. Connect to Mary. She's going to shoot from far. The two rebounds and another corner kick for Saskatoon. Saskatoon is trying to respond quickly. After they, they allow a go in coming from Winnipeg and a, and a rebound in there, Mary gonna charge for five. That's a goal! Goal! Size, cartoon, white, green and white. Number three, Tia. She gets a rebound out of the goalie. She able in the right place in the right time. She's able to connect it in there. That's a beautiful shot from Mary from far from the 15-yard from line. 
they're able to connect it. Impressive. Saskatoon now three. Winnipeg one. What a shot from Mary there. Touch a defensive player. Get a goalie in. And Tia, in the right place, right time, connects it. And she's able to score 3-1 now for Saskatoon against Winnipeg. We have now a little bit of a magical situation on the field there. The ball kind of hit it. A Winnipeg player in the down. And uh, it's actually a perfect time for us to talk about. Um, check it out, the Team Canada futsal team tonight at youtube.com slash CONCACAF. They're going to be playing Panama. They're going to be in the Group B, the second place in Group B. Uh, they're going to face the first place, Panama. Panama beat uh, uh, the other team last night. And, and, and Canada tie with Cuba, 5-5. Five, five, uh, five, five. And they're going to have an opportunity to face the leaders now. They need the three points to qualify for the second stage. Um, the game is at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Pacific Time. Again, you can check the game at youtube.com slash CONCACAF. It's, um, it's been a weekend, a week here in, in Calgary, Alberta. It's been an incredible tournament put together by Canada Soccer. We are so excited about everything, the growth of the game, the growth of futsal in, in, in Canada and Western Canada as well. I have here Ron O'Neill with me. He's the match commissioner for Canada Soccer for the 2024 Futsal Championship here in Calgary, Alberta. Thank you very much, Ron, for coming here and joining us on our broadcast of the gold medal final for the female division of the 2024 championship. You're very welcome. It's a delight to be here. Ron, I don't know if you know this, but this is a historical final. This is the first time ever on the male and the female side since 2015 on the, on the futsal championship that we have a final that does not have Quebec or Ontario. It's a, a Prairie's final. How's, how, how exciting is that? It's always good to see new teams moving up the ranks. It just shows the growth of the sport. And it's uh, obviously Ontario, Quebec are powerhouses in this. And to see these teams uh, develop and grow and challenge them at this tournament, that's why we play these games. It, it's, it's been unbelievable, especially because you have uh, you know, a, a Manitoba and a Saskatchewan team kind of coming together. And, and, and again, they, we, both teams, have, uh, they're full of university players, right? We can see that universities are really playing these games. And, and then it's going through the youth, going through the youth system, something that Ontario and, 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 and Quebec had figured out. But Ron, again, how has been your experience here so far? Like, what's, what's your view of the, of the tournament so far since, since Thursday here from Canada Soccer? Again, thank you very much. We really, futsal fans all over the country, really appreciate everything you guys are doing for futsal. Well, you're most welcome, and it's been a wonderful uh, experience. This is actually my first futsal competition, so this has uh, been an eye-opening experience for me, but it's been a delightful to be here. The uh, cooperation from the uh, local organizing committee has been absolutely amazing. we got good fan attendance. The competition has been fierce but great, and a couple more big games come up this afternoon, so it's going to be very interesting, and seeing this growth, uh, just to give you a quick example, this is only the second year we had a national women's competition. And this competition, we have nine women's teams and eight men's teams. And the growth of this across the country is fantastic. Isn't that amazing? The, 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 the second year, the female, the female championship is already bigger uh, than the male championship. Uh, we have at 3 o'clock the men's finals. The men goes final. That's going to be Ontario and Quebec. Uh, Alberta tried to hold Quebec yesterday. We got, they got a little bit of a lesson <laughs> of how to play futsal. Uh, what's your expectation for the 3 o'clock game? A lot of excitement. It's going to be fast. It's going to be uh, wonderful to watch. And boy, these players are playing with their hearts and souls and a lot of skill. So it's going to be fantastic. Well, something that's very interesting, it's very worth noting too, that Quebec is coming up with last seven players that right now are actually playing for Team Canada. And Ontario has three players that are actually on that team as well. Like we couldn't have even a, a bigger match. But what we have seen here throughout the week is it's it's impressive. The quality, is, it's, it's out there, right? It really shows to the, uh, the expertise of those two provinces, those two clubs, that they could lose that many of their best players and are still in the championship game. And I was watching, I got a few minutes last night to see the game, uh, Cuba and Canada, and they realized that seven of the players on the floor Should could be, be on this floor, 
And then there's also, well, three more total of uh, 10 could be the seven from Quebec and three from Ontario. So it certainly shows the depth and the growth in those provinces, how well futsal has come along. And, and just give an update to, to, to your audience right now, like the, the game, the bronze medal game ends at 2-0 for Quebec and Quebec is going to earn the bronze medal for the female, for the female final, which you have like a magical, a medical situation happen through the here. We can run if you can spare a little, a couple more times, a couple more minutes with you. So uh, you talk about the local organizers through Calgary United Soccer Association and through Pro do, though, uh, uh, being her leadership and, and, and Raj again, the president of Calgary United. Uh, we know Pearl is retiring very soon. We are very sad to see. She, again, we're excited for her retirement. But at the same time, it's like I know she's going to stick around. She's not going to go anywhere. Uh, how's been the, the how been the experience with the local organizers with CUSA and, and 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 all that comes with it? It's been just absolutely fantastic. Pearl is just in her group and the leadership she provides. There's simply nothing more we can ask of her that we haven't received. And if we do find something and ask of it, it'll be there very soon. There's simply nothing nothing but cooperation. If there's something we want, it's there. And that's the whole group. It's not just obviously her leadership, but it's right through all of them. From the minute we arrived, as soon as we got here, she took charge of whatever we needed. And obviously the experience shows, because obviously it's not her first time. And uh, it's not the first time uh, that Calgary's hosted this. And you can certainly see it the way everything is set up. The facility is phenomenal. The cooperation, the administration and so on is just working as smoothly as it can possibly be. So it's been fantastic. We can't say thank you enough. And I'm delighted that if I'm going to be looking after a futsal tournament that I got to work with Pearl. Because certainly you're not going to find any better. Well, for sure, it's, it's not her last tournament as well. Like, even though she's retiring, <laughs> she's going to stick around. We know, we know good, Pearl. Good for all of us if that happens. It's, it, it's going to be great for soccer. Ron, thank you so much for taking the time to, to talk to us here on the broadcast. Again, it's been a privilege to be around here with you guys, like with, with Canada Soccer and all, all the work you guys do behind the scenes in there, kind of make sure the thing is in place. We, we are very excited that the futsal is growing, the sport's growing in the country. It is incredible opportunity for us. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're most welcome. Thank you very much. This was Ron O'Neill from the match commissioner of the 2024 Canadian Championship of Futsal. Again, we still have a magical emergency on the court in there. We, uh, we, we need to kind of uh, uh, move it a little bit, but it's been, it's been an incredible tournament. It's been a very good tournament that we are, uh, that we are working on it. Uh, and then we have an incredible pleasure to be able to come, to come here. Again, we're still in an emerg magical emergency here on the court. We're just kind of uh, trying to keep you up to date. The game is being stopped right now at uh, 17 minutes and 58 seconds of the second half. We need to make sure that uh, we get um, we got things taken care of. It. In the meantime, we we're trying to get you informed what's happening. Don't forget at 3 o'clock, we have the final, the men's final on the 2024 Canadian Futsal Championship. 
the night of the October, the team from Ontario and the Sport Montreal from Quebec, they're going to be gladiating for the for the final. It's going to be a very interesting final. Sports Montreal is trying to go for the third title, third title in a row, and become the, the biggest winner of the of the futsal championship in Canada soccer history. Um, this tournament that goes back all the way to 2015. Sports Montreal is trying to go the third back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back championship. It's going to be a challenge. Night of October, it's going to be a challenge trying to not allow that to happen. Uh, it's a rematch of last year's final here in Calgary, Alberta. Um, now, it's a little bit different final since uh, 10 out of the of 10 players are serving Team Canada in the, in the finals there. And uh, we we are... And they'll be able to serve, serve in Canada there, so they're not going to be here. But it's going to still going to be an interesting final. Sports Montreal will try. It has a couple of very interesting players that um, it can um, it can really impact it and 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 show people how it's done. Like show 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 people the the, the dynamic of futsal and how things kind of progress and how how different it is and how exciting the game can be and and the growth of the game in in Canada. Saying that though, we do have Andre Zadora here. Uh, the assistant coach and the president of Edmonton Scottish United, first time ever uh, coming to Nationals of Futsal. It's a uh, it's uh, a club that it's a league that started just this year in up in Edmonton. Um, it's been very excited to see the growth and and Edmonton Scottish brings two teams to the first to the first national event. So Sadora, thank you very much for coming here on a broadcast for Canada Soccer. Welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely, uh, we're super excited to be here. Uh, obviously, for us, we've seen great growth of the sport of futsal in Edmonton just over the span of the last six months or so. Um, for us to be able to come here uh, in the inaugural season of the Edmonton Futsal League, um, win provincials, and then come out to a uh, national final. And now we're playing for the bronze medal with the men. Uh, the women won fifth place this morning. Uh, it's super exciting. It's super endearing uh, and super empowering. And hopefully uh, we can translate that to our youth club. It, it, it's something that we've been we've been talking about and how like the, the the coming of the nationals to Calgary last year impacted so much the growth of the game on the prairies and you know one one reason is the Edmonton Futsal League and then you know the inaugural season twenty one teams up there uh, how was how was the league for you guys and how was the experience of going playing futsal for the first time in Lapping Edmonton how how was the how was the season there for you yeah it was great I mean we've always used futsal as sort of a, sort of an off season training tool for our players um, the idea of just having a futsal league in Edmonton and then being able to participate in it um, and have success in it um, what was fantastic for us. I think both teams went almost undefeated throughout the entire season. Um, you know, of course, a couple hiccups here and there, but at the end of the day, uh, we're here, we're excited and ready to play. And how was the experience coming to, like in the provincials? It's it's not that different. You just play some some teams from Calgary. It was the first provincials ever in Alberta with teams from Calgary and Edmonton. Uh, again, uh, that was... Again, we felt it was pretty much it, w it was something that it was tight, but not not as much. But you come to nationals and and you, you guys see a different level of futsal. Uh, how, how was the experience for the females and the males? Yeah, hundred uh, percent. I mean, we play league you know day in and day out in Edmonton, uh, whether it's outdoor, whether it's indoor boarded. Uh, we always play against the same players, right? And uh, to be able to see a different player pool even within the Edmonton Futsal League, uh, then seeing getting to play against actual competition from somewhere other than Edmonton uh, in terms of the Calgary teams that we played at Provincials um, and seeing some success there, obviously, uh, you know, made us really think, okay, wow, we can, uh, we can really compete. And we understand this futsal game. We're loving it. But we came out here to Nationals, and there's teams that have been playing it for much, much longer than we have. Um, and to be able to compare ourselves to them and still see some success, obviously, like I said, the men are in the third. Uh, the, the woman won fifth earlier this morning playing against other provinces, seeing what they're capable of, uh, really makes us want to expand and grow our programs for next year. And that's, and that's, really, that's really fundamental for the growth of the game in general. And, and even like, do you, do you guys see that as uh, futsal as, as a tool to, to develop the, the youth program, like you mentioned before, the youth program, and that really have a reflection on your 11, 11, 11 side game? Yeah, definitely. I mean, like we said, we use it as an as an off season training tool for sure. Uh, the technical skills that you learn in futsal can be carried over into uh, the outside, the outdoor game, the eleven aside game, um, and to be able to introduce it to our youth players, I think will be fantastic, uh, both for the growth of 
um, the sport and for the growth of our club. So last night we see you guys going face to face to Quebec. We guys had a success with BC and and Yukon, and you guys face a Quebec team that it was out of this world, and 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 it's something that um, for especially for us here in the West, like we don't we haven't seen that level of futsal before. So how what did you guys see in the floor? How, how was that experience of facing a Quebec team that we don't see all the time out, out here in the West? Like how was that experience for you guys? Yeah, let's not kid ourselves. I mean, we played what was essentially a national B or C side yesterday, right? Um, you know, even for the result to be 9-4, I think was uh, a little bit flattering on our part um, to be able to see real futsal, futsal technique, uh, the rotation, the movement of players. Uh, that's not something we see in Edmonton at all, and we know what we need to aspire to and aim to for future seasons. And uh, what's the expectation, expectation today for the bronze medal game against, against Manitoba? They, they also have some Brazilians in there. They also know, I don't know if you guys have watched, they, they also know how to move the ball. They, uh, they all have some, some opportunities that they gave on Terry a little bit of, uh, of a run for their, for their, uh, a little bit of run for their money there uh, on, a, on, the, on the semifinal on, on their side there. What are your guys' expectations for the game against Manitoba? Yeah, I mean, we certainly watched some video and we, we have an understanding of the way that they play and I think we've got some ideas on how to counter that. Um, again, at the end of the day, we get out onto the field and we're, we're going to do what we can do. Um, expectations at Scottish are always high. They always have been. We've had success in outdoor nationals, obviously winning the 2016 Challenge Trophy and uh, heading to the finals in 2012 and 2015 as well. Um, and a lot of those guys are still within our core and they still exist on this team and they all have that mentality and that strive to win and they understand how to play in these big games. Um, so, I mean, anything less than a bronze obviously wouldn't be, uh, would be a failure in our part. I mean, obviously we'd love to be in the gold medal game. Uh, we need to strive to get there for future, for future years and future nationals. Um, but as they say, the only thing that sucks more about playing the bronze medal game is losing the bronze medal game. And that's the mentality of the guys today. That's great. Thank you, Zadora. Thank you very much for coming in here and kind of helping us on our broadcast in Canada Soccer TV. Again, it's very exciting to see Edmonton teams kind of coming to nationals and, and, and showing up and, and, and putting in there. And again, the Edmonton Futsal League only started like a year ago. Uh, not even a year. It was just the first season they started it. And uh, it's been really impressive to see they're already coming to nationals in the first year. Again, we, we know there's kind of things coming out from, from Calgary. There's a lot of things coming up. It's not going to be, that's not going to happen all the time, but it's really exciting to see you guys stepping up and, and making it happen. Thank you so much for coming. All right. Thanks for having me, Junior. Take care. No problem. This was uh, Andre Zadora, uh, the assistant coach for the Edmonton Scottish men's and female teams, and also uh, the president of the Edmonton Scottish team there. Uh, he came here uh, with two, they came to here from two teams. They, 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 uh, they won provincials in Alberta. They, they, uh, the men's uh, led the regular season of the Edmonton Futsal League, the women's as well, and, and they, uh, the women's took the, the, the Marigold Cup. That's the, the playoff for Futsal Edmonton Qual and, and the men's got in second place of the Handy Cup. Uh, it's also what's, what's the, the playoff for Edmonton Futsal League is called. And they, but they all go, both teams got gold on Alberta Soccer Provincials and, and they came here to Nationals and, and the women's got the fifth place this morning and the men's are playing for bronze uh, on the three o'clock games um, here at uh, Seven Chief Sportsplex. Sutina Nation land in 37 territory in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. We're still with the medical emergency here on the field here at the Seven Chief Sportsplex Complex. Uh, we, the game is being delayed for right now for around 10 minutes already. Uh, we, again, we are hoping everything's gonna be okay. Again, the, we just extra precautions. We're making sure that uh, the player is gonna be taking, gonna be 
uh, taking care of it in the best way possible. Um, for privacy reasons, we make sure that we are not show you what's happening on the court, but you know the the players are ready. The players are kind of trying to keep themselves warm and trying to keep it active throughout the game. The female championship for futsal. This is the second year of the female championship for futsal. Last year, uh, the final was the Extreme from Quebec City and Scarborough United from Ontario. The Extreme from Quebec won uh, the first time. And this again, this is the first year ever that there's a non-Ontario and Quebec teams on the finals for futsal. Uh, the only time that, the first time ever. So, is a completely final with no Quebec and Ontario team. The other the time that a non-Quebec and Ontario team made the final was in 2017 on the men's side when the Saskatoon Olympia made to the final against the Montreal Sporting Al loss uh, in 2017 in Quebec, in Ontario, sorry, in Ontario. The tournament was in Ontario that year. That was the first the first time ever. Again, it's a great opportunity also to plug the, to, to let you know about the, the Canada soccer sponsors. Uh, we're very thankful for all your support for soccer in Canada. At, uh, and that goes to Toyota, CIBC, Visa, Gatorade, GoGo Squeeze, and Sentinel Storage. Also, like to give it a thank you to the CUSA local organizing committee sponsors: Sahota Realty, Calgary Women's Soccer Association, Edda Jones, Fever Sports, and KFC. Don't forget to check out our Team Canada national team on the Concacaf Futsal Championship tonight. Last night they played Cuba. They tie 5-5. They have one point. In the second place of the Group B of the CONCACAF National Futsal Championship. And they're going to face the first place Panama tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. Pacific. Games at youtube.com slash CONCACAF. Don't forget to check out and give us all boys a support. And don't forget to check out our medal ceremony at 3 p.m. after the men's final. The, the, the men's final is at 3 p.m., so the medal ceremony is going to happen uh, after the game in there. So don't forget to kind of check, check it out as well, the medal ceremony, and give you all the support uh, that, that our futsal players needed. Also, remind you that, you know, the bronze, the bronze game from Quebec and Ontario ended from the female division, and Quebec won 2-0, uh, earning the bronze medal. So we know the bronze medal game is going to be for – the bronze medal goes to Quebec – um, we are a little bit behind here in in the gold medal. We had a little bit of an emer a magical emergency happening right now. Uh, and uh, we should be back to the game in the next five to ten minutes. Uh, and then we're going to be able to progress on that. We are about to restart the game here in the next couple of minutes. Uh, the play is being... So we might have a little bit of a timeout here. The Winnipeg team is going to come in together for the restart of the game. The Saskatoon team is also as well. So we had a 14 minutes delay of the game, of the gold medal game. Uh, the teams are coming together. We're going to be ready, but you know, we have seen the growth of the of the game of futsal in Western Canada in a very impressive ways, and as we're getting ready for the second half here, uh, we have the privilege to to talk to two presidents of districts in Alberta, uh, Raj, who is the president of CUSA, a local organizer, and Rob, who is the president of Battle River up in Edmonton. First of all, Raj, thank you so much for hosting us. It's been an incredible tournament here. We're really uh, honored to be here with you guys and the ability that you guys have it, uh, to host us. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's beautiful. It's, everything's been great so far. Oh, you're very welcome. It's our pleasure to welcome everyone from across the country and to our tournament here. And we're just amazed about the support from players, officials, coaches, um, from our partners and the fans. And especially the volunteers. It's been an amazing four days, and 
Let's go out with a bang here with a couple more finals. So is uh, second years in a row that you guys are hosting the national championship. You know, it's it's incredible. This is my first championship coming in. Uh, we're really amazed by the facilities you guys have here, but also how you guys have encouraged the, the playing of futsal in the Calgary area. So can, can you tell us about like, how, how futsal came to be in Calgary and, and how excited you guys are about the growth of the game here? Uh, futsal, well, it, was, it, it started back by an individual named Brian Wong. Uh, he started a league with some of his friends and stuff, and then the league got to be big enough that where they became partners here with CUSA. And then from there, we took just having men's. Uh, we had men's and ladies. And we developed a nice, small, but very passionate community here for futsal within Calgary. And then last year, uh, a little bit over last year, we were toyed with the idea of hosting nationals. And we said, you know what, let's just do it and see what happens. And we were proud to be the first time hosting nationals outside of Quebec and Ontario. And also the first time we had women's championships uh, available. And then we said, should we do it again? And we're like, let's do it again and see if we can, <laughs> what, what we can do. And it's been an amazing success. We learned a lot from last year for the first time hosting it. And who knows? Maybe we go for three in a row. Well, and you get you get a historical moment here where you have the first final ever on the Mayo and the Female final. That's don't we don't have Quebec and Ontario playing each other. Uh, you have Manitoba, Manitoba, besides Saskatchewan. Rob, you being up there in Edmonton and you being involved with the Edmonton Futsal League in there. What's so? Uh, I'm assuming you got the cues from from your, the neighbors from the south, and you, and you guys start a league up there. Yeah, it's uh, it always starts with a few Brazilian friends. And then it morphs into something bigger. And it started with uh, a couple of good friends in Edmonton, brought the idea to me, and I said, why not? Let's do this. How was the first uh, ever season in Edmonton? You guys, in the first year, you guys sending two teams already. Yeah, it's phenomenal to be here and to watch the growth of the sport uh, from the beginning in October to now, uh, even with the two teams that represent Alberta. And uh, we're proud to uh, be here to watch and support them. And uh, we're happy to be uh, in cooperation with EDSA in terms of the league and uh, moving forward with that. And uh, we look forward to this amazing sport just blossoming. So what, what do you guys see the, the game of futsal growing in the province of Alberta? Like, what, uh, Raj, what, what's your vision of it? And what do you, what do you think we, we can go with this game here in the province? Well, we do a very good job on the adult level. Uh, well, but we, what we really need to do is get into the youth, uh, introduce more youth to this wonderful sport. Because, you know, yes, it is like soccer, but it is a different sport. And once we can get the youth into it, then we can get onto that level of competing with the powerhouses in Quebec and Ontario and hopefully develop more passion and hopefully get into year-long futsal leagues. Right now, we just do it as winter. Then we go back to 11 v 11, which I think hinders us at the national level. So if we can really build up that youth, build up the grassroots of futsal across the province, I think it'll pay dividends. Rob, what's yeah, your thoughts? Same thing, I agree. We're already working with our friends at EMSA, and uh, we have plans to unroll some futsal this, this year and uh, in indoor, indoor. But I like to see the gap. It's the gap that I, I think that we're missing in Alberta between seasons. You know, in BC, where I grew up playing soccer, we played from October to May. Gentlemen, thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to come and talking to us. It's really right. impressive to see the growth of the game in Alberta as we restart the game here on the second half. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Enjoy. So we restart the game here, Winnipeg and Saskatoon. With the game here with uh, 17 minutes to play to play on the second half. Uh, Winnipeg is kind of coming with a bang, trying to kind of push to push Saskatoon uh, back to their to their defense. Brooklyn's kind of kind of chasing the ball, kind of watching the ball in there, and then that's gonna be the way we're gonna we're gonna move into the second half. Uh, the game is ready. The the people are ahead ready. Um, in So Winnipeg is trying to take it, take it the initiative and trying to kind of push it Saskatoon to their defense side. They come with a little bit of different attitude. They lost a player due to an injury. Uh, we hope everything is okay. We're gonna send thoughts and prayers, make sure that she, you know, hoping that she everything is okay. Saskatoon trying to come out of the pressure from the back. They are trying to find a connection. Winnipeg came up with a different attitude since the break. They are kind of a little bit more tied up on their marking and giving a little bit of less space to Saskatoon into into that position there. Mary got the ball. She had a, she had a beautiful shot in the first to generate the third goal. Connected to Tia. Moving to the center. Mary opened up to the right side. 
Isabella is kind of controlling the ball there on the left side, and she loses control. It's kick in for Winnipeg. Trying to build from the back, they're trying to change a little bit of that to the Brooklyn kind of control, play that pivot position there in the center. They're kind of cycling a little bit of the ball. Getting to Selena, who gets to Brooklyn, who connects it to uh, Ali, who shots. Get a corner kick for Ali, for Winnipeg. Winnipeg comes back from the break with a different, very different attitude from the, from the first and second half. And uh, Ali has a shot. <laughs> There's a touch in there. It's another corner kick for Winnipeg. Second on the second half. Second back-to-back. -back. And has another shot there. Mary blocks it. She has another opportunity. She brings to the left. It's a kick in. Winnipeg is really pressuring now and really kind of creating these line, these passing, these shooting line opportunities. And even the attitude in the marking is being a little bit different. And has another shot in there in the middle. Mary's kind of marking, Brooklyn connected to the right side. She brings to the right foot. She controls the ball. She protects the ball. She's going to turn around again. Selena had a shot in there. It was blocked. Mary now in the counter attack. She's by herself. There's nobody there from the team. She kind of holds the ball. Connected with Tia, who moves back to Mary there, holding on the right side on the depth in there. She controls it. And then Selena kind of protects the ball, and it's a goal kick for Winnipeg. Don't forget our Team Canada game at 5 p.m. today at youtube.com slash CONCACAF, Canada, uh, Canada versus Panama, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, CONCACAF Championship, qualifying for the World Cup this year in November in Azerbaijan. Winnipeg's trying to build from the back in there. Trying to try to create a momentum there, trying to recover. It's 3 2, 3 1. Saskatoon, they need, they need some kind of answer kind of quick. They need some kind of answer. They, so that's 15 minutes of the game, and they need to be able to, to pass it back. They need to be able to push it back. They need to go here in, in time now to make it into a game, to make it the last 10 minutes very decisive. Cheyenne kind of. Controlling the ball there and getting the ball on the attack zone for Saskatoon. The rider controlling it in the corner, trying to buy some time. Get another kick in in there. Not a lot of movement happening right now. Cheyenne got to control, lose the ball, give it a contra track to Winnipeg. Marija has the ball. Gets all the way to Ali. They try to cross the ball, and the ball goes in, goes out. Saskatoon ball. There's a shot there for Winnipeg. Two shots back to back, and it's a corner kick for Winnipeg. Winnipeg ready with four shots in the second half. Same number of shots that they had it on the on the first half already. Still 15 minutes to play. Counter attack here for Saskatoon. Shot from. Cheyenne, she got a block hit. There's a counterattack from Winnipeg. Things are controlled there by the Saskatoon defense. So the 3 o'clock game, we're going to have Ontario and Quebec uh, playing for the men's final. It's, um, it's a rematch from last year's final between the 9th of October and, and the Sporting Montreal. Sporting Montreal trying to go through a back-to-back-to-back -back -to -back championship three in a row. Um, and uh, that's the 9th of October is going to try to block it not allow that to happen three championships in a row from Montreal from, from, from the Sporting Montreal Sporting Montreal right now who has two national championships and they're going to go for the third one it's going to become the biggest the biggest club 
uh, winning the futsal championship. And, and we have here Coach JJ from 9th of October. Coach JJ, welcome to our broadcast here on the female final. Coach JJ, what's your expectations for the game uh, at 3 o'clock? Well, expectations, uh, expectation we're expecting to win. Definitely <laughs> is the first one. Uh, but overall, we're expecting a, a beautiful match um, from both sides, right? Um, for sure, top two contenders here. Um, again, we're expecting a beautiful match for everybody to watch and experience together. So you guys are missing three players for the national team that they are playing the CONCACAF tournament. Montreal's missing seven players. Uh, does that take you away from the game, or that's actually just shows how deep your, your programs are and how, how much of so futsal players you guys are? I think a little bit of both, right? Uh, for sure, maybe more on their side, that they're missing uh, seven and, and most of their main players. But hopefully it goes to show that, yeah, there is, there's a deep bench and, and we're doing things well on both sides of Ontario and Quebec. Talking about Ontario and Quebec, we have the president of Ontario Soccer here, Peter. Peter, you know, you, we talk about futsal and, and, and the, the core part of that is on development of Ontario Soccer. Peter, what, what can you tell us about the, 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 the role that futsal plays on, on the Ontario soccer pr uh, process there? Which Futsal is the, one of the best, best games in, in uh, contention right now. It's FIFA's official indoor sport, and we haven't embraced it in Ontario. We started embracing it several years ago. Last year was my first attempt attending here at the National uh, Futsal Championships. Luckily enough for us, Ontario on 9 October won the gold medal. But it's part of our strategy in Ontario now to grow this game. So we will do everything we can over the next three to four years to grow the game Similar to our friends in Quebec in the Belle, La, Belle, La Belle Province, they have futsal leagues that outnumber us in Ontario. Our goal is to grow it as much as they have it in Ontario and be, in Quebec and be as competitive. So we, we have a historical final happening right now here between Winnipeg and Saskatoon. It's the first, first time ever in, in the history of the tournament where it's not a Quebec and Ontario final. Uh, on the female side, you guys did the bronze medal. Uh, Quebec kind of took the, the bronze medal there. But... How do you guys see the growth of the game on the country? Because for the longest was being Ontario and Quebec, and now we see a little bit more exposure into into as if it's a counter attack for Saskatoon. And that's a goal! Goal! Saskatoon! Saskatoon scored number four, fourth goal today. Goals go for number eight, Harley Noel. First of the night, first of the game here today. Now Saskatoon four, uh, Manitoba one on this beautiful final here that we're going. Uh, it's impressive that the counter attack, they're able to build from the back in there. They created space and she was left alone with the goalie. A nice dribble here on the right side, finding her in the middle by herself in there. And she all she had to do was put it inside. Now Saskatoon four, Manitoba, one and now Saskatoon has another opportunity. Mary has another opportunity to shoot the ball. She bring it back to her. Um, Nami's kind of had the ball. She had the ball on the side there. Mary's controlling, bring it to the middle. Find another hole in there, and it's a control for Manitoba. But Peter, I was sorry, I was kind of cutting you off in there. It's things are getting excited here on the on the female final. We have to grow the game across the country if we want to be the best in the world. We can't just grow it in Ontario and Quebec. The whole country has to be involved, and growing it on the women's side is especially important. Look at the females out there competing today in the final. It's not Ontario, Quebec, yes, but it's good that there's teams out there that are competing at the level that we expect them to be. So give it a few more years, and we'll have more teams competing at this level, and this championship will grow. Coach, what, what's your expectation on the men's side there? They're seeing these different teams coming up from the other country. Again, of course, you know, we, you guys are a little bit of step through steps ahead, but did you see any difference that happened on the men's side, on, on the male side? Well, like Peter said, you know, it, it can't just be Ontario and Quebec. Um, we definitely have to have to grow the sport of futsal all over Canada, uh, and it's starting. You can see definitely for us, uh, Manitoba uh, was a great team. Um, you know, they put us on our heels for a little bit. Uh, we came in expecting that, but again, to see that, to, to be able to compete and not have big score games, it's, it's really what we want as, as professionals here. Well, we're going to be looking after our boys at 5, at 5 p.m. Pacific and 8 p.m. Eastern at uh, playing the CONCACAF Championships. Thank you very much, Coach. Thank you very much, Peter Thank J.J. So and much. Peter, Thank for you. coming to our broadcast here at Canada Soccer. It's been a pleasure to be able to, to talk futsal with you guys. And uh, it, it's, 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 it's fundamental. And, and it's so incredible to see the growth of the game uh, in, in Canada and the Western provinces and the Eastern province and the level that it is. And we're back here to this exciting, exciting final here for Saskatoon 4-1. Um, 
Nami has just a block shock block in there. And, and, and we are going to be looking forward for the men's final, Quebec and Ontario, Night of the October, and Sporting Montreal at 3 o'clock um, here at the Seven Chiefs Sportsplex in the Tucson Nation land, the territory, Civ territory in Calgary, the beautiful Calgary, Alberta. Winnipeg's trying to kind of recompose themselves after the, they allowed the fourth to go in. They're trying to move the ball side to side. Ali, Ali has the ball and trying to control the pace. Trying to find Jasmine in there, and the ball just go out. Last 10 minutes of the second half. Saskatchewan's leading 4-1. An incredible, incredible final here. Cheyenne kind of threw with the ball, getting one v one here on the defensive system. She's looking for the space. She moved the ball to the one side to the other. She found there Georgina. And they lose the ball to Winnipeg. Winnipeg's trying to recompose and kind of build it from the back. Saskatoon has the ball there, coming from the right side, building up, find a hole there, find a hole to Cheyenne. She's going to build it. She has Jade in the middle there. A little bit. She holds the ball a little bit to be able to get to, get to the pass. Winnipeg is trying to kind of break the defensive center wall there. Nice shot. Oh, the rebound. She misses the rebound. Nice shot there from, from Ellie and the rebound from Kezia. She kind of missed it. Saskatoon is trying to keep the ball possession, keep the clock running, keep the clock rolling as, as they're getting ready there, kind of moving the ball. Just trying to kind of get some time, get it going there. Winnipeg is trying to counterattack, trying to create an opportunity there. Saskatoon take the balls back. Winnipeg, after a very good start after the break, it's going back to the old habits of, of allowing the center to Saskatoon. Shane has the ball, control it, found it, shot from the left side by Georgina. Not a lot of angle in there. Jade kind of moved the ball side by side. She sees Cheyenne in the middle there. Selena was able to steal the ball, but Winnipeg lost. Again, one more time, Winnipeg lost the, the control of the ball in there. And that's a foul. That's a foul against Winnipeg. First foul of the half. Brooklyn bringing the ball to the middle, trying to create a space for a shot. They kind of try to rebuild it, to reorganize it, to rearrange, re recircle the ball, and they kind of lose possession at the end there. It's been a very dominant game here for Saskatchewan. They dominate the center of the field, they giving not giving much, not allowing Winnipeg to exchange too much passes. Uh, a lot of the, sh the opportunities that Winnipeg has is it's been trying to go to the sides, to the corners in there, like like right now happened, fourth corner for Winnipeg on the half. But Winnipeg hasn't been able to produce too much through the center and create some shots, like they they have very little shots. Being blocked at. And this nice shot here you know, in the middle. So 
Only third shot in the half for Winnipeg. Nice defense there from Saskatoon number eight, Harley Noll. Good anticipation there in the game. Now it's becoming a game, a little bit of a throwing from goalies to goalies as you know, Winnipeg pushes their defense. The goalie kind of created it. Find Mary in the middle. Nice pass for the Saskatoon. Mary has a shot. Right on the goalie. Mary's very good movements today. Her ability to find the holes, find the space is really impressive. For sure, one of the best players of the of the of the final today. Winnipeg lose the ball again to Mary. He's controlling, dominating the center there. It's moving away, creating the distance. Finally, Isabella reduce it, pass it back. Get your Harley. Get to the other side with Alyssa. Pretty the space. Winnipeg is pushing the marking. Winnipeg is bringing the ball to the center there. Trying to create something in there. Going to the last five minutes of the second half. Saskatoon four, Winnipeg one. It's been a very dominant performance from Saskatoon in this gold medal final. Very dominant performance from Mary, number 32 from Saskatoon for sure. Um, Mary Kilcher has like, been very, very strong performance to her in, the, in this final here. Um, and Saskatoon for sure has been uh, earning this, fall, this gold medal. Uh, at the 2024 Canadian Championship for Futsal of Canada Soccer. Again, we thank you so much for the Canada Soccer sponsors, Toyota, CIBC Visa, Gatorade, Gogo Squeeze, Sentinel Storage, and to the CUSA local organized community sponsors, the Sahota Realty, the Calgary Women's Soccer Association, Edward Jones, Fever Sports, and KFC for supporting the game of Futsal the National Championship 2024 here in Calgary, the beautiful Calgary, Alberta. Mary has the ball on the left, right side. She loses the ball. To Marika. She's coming back. Then she has to turn again one more time. Takes the ball back. Gets back to Kaylee. Oh, Marika throws so the ball. She shoots out wide. Out of the ball. And don't forget, well, check out our team, Canada, on CONCACAF Futsal Championship tonight. Last night they play Cuba and they tie 5-5. Tonight they play Panama for the leadership of the Group B. Uh, the game is at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. Pacific. And games at youtube.com slash CONCACAF. You're going to see there a lot of Ontario and Quebec players that should be playing here. But hey, we're not. We're allowed them to go play for Team Canada. We want to see them in the World Cup in November in Azerbaijan. And it's the best we can offer here in Canada. They can have it. We we can enjoy here the, the final, the men's final Coca Calf. And it's going to be a very good futsal game, my friends. I got to tell you this. So I saw some of the players. It's being impressive. This is Katuna the counter attacking there. If, oh, that's a penalty. Penalty. Isabella trying to do a back heel going there. Lydia comes and foul her inside the box. That is a penalty. Penalty for Saskatoon. Isabella is feeling, she's feeling, she's feeling the heat, but she had a very beautiful movement there. She had an incredible, interesting movement there. The ball comes to the middle. She was by herself in there. She has nice back heel toe and is a penalty kick. So there's no question. Penalty, penalty for, for Saskatoon. Opportunity to do a 5-1, to go up 5-1. For, for, for this game. Cheyenne's gonna be taking the penalty, the penalty kicks. These referees are giving instructions and kinda, kinda helping out and getting going. Cheyenne is getting ready, getting ready for the penalty kick. Lydia is kinda trying to block. Lydia did very well yesterday on the, um, on the penalty, the PKs against Ontario. And they, she's the reason why they made it to the final, to the final game. Uh, so Lydia is gonna, gonna try to keep, keep Winnipeg hopes on board. Cheyenne's gonna move it. She goes towards it. The leader protects it. Cheyenne got a rebound. It's a goal. Goal. 
Paradise Cartoon Green and White. Number seven, Lydia Isabel. <laughs> Cheyenne, I'm so sorry. Number seven, Cheyenne for Saskatoon White and Green. Puts Saskatoon One Head 5 1. I am so sorry, Cheyenne, for missing your name in there. But number seven, Cheyenne from Saskatoon with a nice rebound from the penalty kick, beating Lydia, beating Lydia in there, and uh, put Saskatoon five, Winnipeg one. Again, it's futsal, it's never done, it's never over, uh, but it gives a very nice cushion for Saskatoon as the game progress. 5-1, Saskatoon is four, uh, Winnipeg needs four goals to catch, catch back with less than four minutes to, to go. It's going to be it's going to be really hard task. Saskatoon, all Saskatoon has to do right now is to manage the game. And I just give you a shout out. We're going to have the bronze men's bronze medal game starting on another on a, another video. And right now, if you jump jump want to jump up there for the bronze medal game for the for the men's, it's going to be Alberta versus Manitoba. Alberta versus Manitoba on the bronze medal games for the men's. Uh, the live stream is starting right now. So head up there if you want to maybe have both both windows open. Uh, as we finish the women's medal and the men's bronze medal starting right now. Saskatoon just controlling and managing the game right now. The goal scorer Cheyenne just kind of kind of controlling and going it, moving the ball. Make sure that they have possession. All they have to do right now is just keep possession, but there's an opportunity for one more. Haley, Haley Weber. Haley Weber. Should said on that the goalie kind of they have like a, a, a flying goalie right now they have a player goalie right now Lydia is is out uh, Jasmine Jasmine Castro goes to net to play as a flying goalie and uh, it was a nice shot there Saskatoon tries to keep possession move the ball side to side and they lose ball control. Jasmine is on control there. They're trying to kind of create an option in there. She's being becoming available. She's playing as our player. Winnipeg goes to desperation, trying to create something different here, something new here. They have uh, Keza shot the ball. It's a corner kick for Winnipeg. Winnipeg trying to respond there with less than three minutes to the game. And Kate, what can they do? What they can do in here and create something different. They went with a flying goal. If Jasmine's a flying goalie, she's out there. She's out there trying to create an option to cross the ball to Ali. And the ball goes out. All Saskatoon has to do right now is control the ball, create possession, move the ball around. Just to remind you too that um, the medal ceremony for the women is going to happen after the gold medal game for the men's at 3 p.m. Um, so just keep checking the Canada Soccer uh, YouTube channel for, for the gold medal ceremony happening after the men's final. Men's final starts at 3 p.m. Look at the counter attack coming up from Harley. Harley near the goal. She's going to miss it. Score! And go! Go! Saskatoon green and white number eight Harley Noel she put Saskatoon 6-1 on this gold medal final what a game ladies and gentlemen what a game what a game Saskatoon being the dominant the dominant performance today they did not give Winnipeg any space through the middle they Killer counterattacks. They did not allow Winnipeg to play today. Now they're just managing. Now on the score, Saskatoon six. Winnipeg Legacy one. Mary still in the ball in the middle. She created another counter crack. No one v one. She created a space. Lydia is there. Two minutes to the end of the game. Winnipeg's trying to create something new there, try to pass the ball, try to create a score. But Winnipeg's not giving it anything through the middle. 
it's become very hard for Impact to build that. Impact now is just on a waste time, create the ball, pass the ball side to side. When Impact tried to push the marking, Mary controlled the ball in the middle. She's going to start it again, go to the side with the, the right ear. Move the ball back to Mary. Just kind of keep control of the ball, holding it. Georgina has the ball. Passes to Nami. Nami's kind of hold it, control. Keep circling. Keep wasting time. That's all Saskatoon has to do right now to conquer the gold. To get the gold medal. Oh! Nice shot there from Winnipeg. And this ball is still there. Like, and those are the opportunities they cannot, they, they, they need to try. Shot from um, Number eight, Liana. She's kind of steal the ball there in the middle and create a nice opportunity there for, for Winnipeg. But that's what you, you need to do right now. Not allow Saskatoon to move the ball and try to high pressure, but there's not a lot much time that we can do this. It's only a minute, the last minute of the game. Last minute of the game, all Saskatoon has to do now is to hold the ball, wasting time, but they still find a pass. They still find a pass to Alyssa. Alyssa has a shot! That was too close. It's too close. Good, good angle there from, from Lydia. One minute. That's all Saskatoon needs. It. One minute. Hold the ball. And they got a conquer goal. Number 14 for Winnipeg. Ali has a shot. Keep possession. Looking for Ali. She shoot it. There's a rebound. But there's Winnipeg not able to kind of maximize on it. That's 37 seconds, 37 seconds on the clock. 37 seconds on the clock. Brooklyn kind of controls. She's trying to do the turn. She tries to create space in the middle. Saskatoon closes it. Block the shot. Merna has a counter crime. 1v1. She brings to the left. She creates space. 1v1 with Lydia. She goes, scores, and goes! Saskatoon white and gold, number 32, Mary Kutcher, in a counter attack against the goalie there. She steals the ball, they counter attack in a 1v1, she dribble, she bring on the defender, and she has a space open to Lydia now, sealing the 7-1. 7-1 scores for, for, for Saskatoon. They have the gold, they have the first place. They're going to be the first non Ontario came back champions of the of the futsal the futsal championship in Canada. They are almost there. They are almost there. Few seconds. Few seconds for the tournament. There's a timeout now. Timeout now for the Saskatoon coach. They are few seconds away to be the first non-Ontario, non-Quebec team to be the champions of the futsal championships. 7-1. Seven, 7-1. One, seven, one. Sets the score. Saskatoon scores seven one on Manitoba in this amazing final. It's 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 almost time. It's eight seconds to the end of the game. It's gonna be Saskatoon is gonna become the first non-Ontario and Quebec team to be crowned national champions in futsal in the world of Canada. What a what a what a final, ladies and gentlemen! What a final we witness here. A very dominant, a very dominant performance from Saskatoon. Not, not allowing Winnipeg to progress. They are eight seconds away to be, to be national champions. The first time ever national champions and joining the extreme from Quebec as the national champions. And they have one title, put one title in their badge. They are eight seconds away from allowing that to happen. So they're moving the ball. Mary passed the middle. There's an opportunity for one more. One opportunity for one more. They're going to shot. And Lita defends it. They not enough. They didn't have enough. They want more and more go, and that's it. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Final score: Saskatoon seven, Manitoba one. Saskatoon was crowned the 2024 Futsal Championship champion on the female divisions for the first time ever. A non-Ontario and Quebec team is crowned champion of futsal in Canada. It's we witnessing history here since 2015. This, this tournament happens. We see Coach Juan there, like he's very excited, very emotional. Um, this this tournament, they, they crown themselves national champions for the first time. For the first time, a non Quebec and Ontario team are uh, national champions in futsal. It's a historical moment here as you see the, the growth of the game. On the female side, and 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 I was being developing in the in the west in the prairies. I was the the, the shifting towards the west. It's um, 
It's something that we're really impressed with, really amazed to see. So we're going to have the medal ceremonies after the men's final at 3 o'clock. The men's final starts at 3 o'clock, so we, after the men's final. So join us for the men's finals at 3 o'clock. Uh, we're going to be able to have the medal ceremonies right after the final. And again, we want to give you, remind you that the Team Canada for Futsal is playing at 5 p.m. Um, at youtube.com slash CONCACAF. Uh, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Then second place in Group B, they're going to face the first place team, uh, Panama, the time last night with Cuba. So we'll go to youtube.com slash CONCACAF, and then we're going to be able to check our boys on Team Canada uh, trying to find a spot on the World Cup of Futsal. So congratulations to Saskatoon, green and white, on winning the 2024 Futsal Championship in Calgary, Alberta, for Canada Soccer. So, my friends, see you at 3 o'clock for the men's final. See you there.